Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, your Greater Toronto Area Real Estate Resource, sharing with you the most up-to-date information. As per this article, the cost to own a Toronto home soars to over 200% above average household income. We're gonna break this down and I'm gonna share with you my market predictions at the end of the video. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, drop a like. And if you're considering buying or selling, make sure to call me, call me, call me. My customers get excellent service. And now taking a deep dive into this article over here, we can see that the average home in Toronto is costing a staggering $1,163,700 according to the MLS. And now when we contrast that with the average household income, which is $93,006, this obviously poses the question, of how can a resident of Toronto even afford to buy one of these properties and maintain it. Assuming the average household earns that number, about $93,000, it means that they would be able to maintain the cost of a property that would be worth $778,000. And I have to say, throughout my over 10 years of experience as a real estate agent, this is the most interesting markets that I've experienced because of the fact that not only do we have very high prices, but we also have very few buyers. In fact, buyers are idle right now. Because basic economics tells us that we have supply and then we have demand. See, right now we have all the supply. We don't have much demand. Yet this supply is going to be sitting on the market because these sellers are not even decreasing their prices enough for buyers to actually get in the market and purchase. Every single day I'm talking to buyers that say the same thing and that's, Michael, I'm going to buy a property once the prices come down. But I really believe that if prices were going to come down, they would have come down by now. And that's because, of course, the interest rates had increased, the price is still held strong, and the most recent update from the Bank of Canada made October 25th was that the interest rates would be kept stable, yet it hasn't really made any change to the market. And the most important thing is that sellers have the right expectation when they're listing their property because it's very unlikely that they're going to sell over asking or they will be selling within four to seven days like the market that we experienced before. Really what sellers want to do is they want to look around and look at the existing listing supply and if there's other homes sitting on the market and they're priced competitively, then the seller may want to think twice about selling in this market. But if they are a motivated seller that needs to make a move, then of course they would have to price their property a lot lower than what they would have hoped for. And now if anyone tells you that listings aren't selling over asking price, it's a pretty ignorant comment because of the fact that if you list your property under asking, it will sell over the asking price. And this strategy is still being executed in a lot of different areas and with a lot of property styles. So the way that you would decide if you would list your property the traditional way or you would list it for a bidding war is really based on what's working well in your area. If a lot of listings are selling over asking price and they're getting record breaking prices in your market in your area, then of course it would make sense to follow that same strategy. But of course, make sure that you consult with the best real estate agent before making that decision so that you can have the smoothest listing process that you can have. Meaning that you'd be selling your home for the most amount of money in the least amount of time and with the least amount of stress during the process. That's why people do hire me. So if you are considering buying or selling, make sure to call me, call me, call me. And real estate agents, if you're looking for great training, for great support, make sure to reach out to me to learn about eXp Realty. If you're a struggling realtor right now, you're not the only one and that's okay. Rather than giving up your real estate license, have a conversation with me and we can discuss a business plan that would work for you. If you did get value from this video, make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.